Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Gentle Farmer. Ooh, I made myself dizzy doing that. We, today we're going to, I think, go check out the village that we saw in the distance over that way. I was cutting birch right over here and off there we noticed <clears throat> a savanna village. So we're going to head over there today and see what we can find. Um, I'm going to take a few things with me. I've got a bed. I lost my last one when I blew myself up in the last episode. I'm going to take some iron. I want to take also a smoker and a lectern. And uh, the coal and the iron are maybe to trade with the villagers a little bit, to show you trading, and uh, possibly to get some villagers traded up, which means they will be... Uh, if you trade villagers up, they get more and more and better trades, and uh, they can sell you higher level stuff, and it gets in the end buy better stuff from you. And what I'm hoping is that okay. I can uh, use a lectern. You can make a librarian um, who will sell you enchanted books and things, and they're always wonderful to have. And with the smoker, I can make a butcher. Um, and... If we are lucky, a butcher will eventually buy things from us that we can use to make a lot of, uh, make a fair amount of emeralds. They trade you emeralds, and you can use the emeralds then with the librarian or someone else to buy stuff that you need. Um, I mostly am thinking enchanted weapons and books of enchanting, but uh, we'll take those and we'll use these other things as products to to trade with the village the lectern and the lectern is the crafting table not the crafting table the workstation for librarians um, and then like I said librarians will trade you enchanted books and all kinds of things like that so I'm going to take a quick slate if you take a furnace um, put it in the center and you take some logs all right, you can make a smoker. Now, I already made a smoker, so I'm not going to make another one, but that is how you go about making a smoker. Um, and like I said, that's the workstation of the that's the workstation of the library. All right, so let's go. Oh my word, look at that. These guys are a raiding party and they occur randomly. Um, if I engage them, if I were to shoot them with an arrow or run within their detection range, they would begin attacking me. Um, and most dangerous of all, you see that guy with the banner on his head. If you kill him, uh, it gives you a status effect called Bad Omen. And if you have Bad Omen and you enter a village, it begins a raid on that village, which is... Uh, phenomenal and we are not nearly at the stage where we could handle a raid um, it might well wipe out the whole village basically when you get a raid you get wave after wave of these guys coming and then along with them are witches and uh, evokers which are powerful um, powerful mobs with spells and there's some that have the evokers can summon things to fight you and uh, vindicators also come with them and they're just mount mobs that wield a very powerful axe and they'll do a lot of damage to you so we're not gonna we're gonna try to avoid those guys and not fight them and uh, also not start a raid oh and lastly if you start a raid probably worst of all are the um, oh there's a bunny stuck in the water um, probably worst of all are the Ravagers, which are these huge bull-like creatures um, that do a m lot of damage, and they can absorb a lot of damage. I'm going to see. I didn't bring a crafting table. I'm going to make a crafting table here real quick because I want to make a boat so we can go across. I forgot to bring my boat. Um... And the boat will allow us to cross this water quickly. And uh, we'll go check out that village. And I'm bringing my bed so that I can sleep over here. Because one thing you do not want to have happen is uh, mobs will spawn within so much distance of you. And if you are near a village and mobs begin to spawn, a lot of the mobs, the... Um, 
zombies in particular will attack villagers and they will quickly wipe out your whole village if you're not careful. Alright, so this first guy is a farmer and if you right click on him, he will offer you some trade. So he's saying if we give him 22 carrots, he'll give us an emerald. If we give him 15 beetroot, he'll give us an emerald. Um, he's got some things planted here that look like lettuce. Oh, and you see they can actually take seeds that they have left over, or food that they have left over, produce, and they can put it in uh, this thing, which is a composter, and it fills up slowly, and when it's completely full, it'll give you a piece of bone meal, which we'll talk later about what bone meal does, but it allows you to uh, rapidly grow... Um, rapidly grow plants. Um, so I'm going to move his composter there because uh, I don't know if you can see what's happening here. He is these things used to be tilled soil and they've turned to regular dirt now because uh, they've been stood on. And what happened was he was standing on that and jumping off of it and he kept destroying his own farmland. Away from me. I could have sworn he came in here. Did he jump off? Oh, look at him. He's slippery. All right, let's go. Oh, there he is. Okay. Hi, buddy. So he is a leather worker and if we give him six leather, he will give us an emerald, or if we give him three emeralds, he'll sell us some dyed leather pants. Um, not very valuable, really. I'd like to... Oh, here's an iron golem. Okay, iron golems spawn naturally around villagers. Villagers spawn them um, when there's a certain number of villagers, at least three, and the, especially if they uh, see mobs, if they see creatures that scare them, like zombies especially, they can spontaneously spawn an iron golem and that's what these and iron golems will protect them and if you have to be careful when you're in a village because if you accidentally hit one of the villagers and this iron golem witnesses it he will attack you and they do a tremendous amount of damage yikes i bumped into a cactus you saw when i hit that cactus it actually did some harm to me so that's something to keep in mind there's a potted plant I'm looking around now for villagers. Oh, there is a um, cartographer's table. So that means if there's a villager living in this house, he should be a cartographer and they are also wonderful. They will, I'm gonna jump on this rooftop real quick. They will sell you maps, um, which you can use to, they, they'll say a lot of cool things. They'll sell you maps you can use to map your village map your world, they'll also sell you, oh, there's the cartographer. So you see, if we have paper, and we can get paper fairly easily with the uh, sugar cane. So if we took our sugar cane and made 24 paper, we could trade it with this guy and he would give us an emerald. And if we gave him seven emeralds, he'll sell us an empty map, which you can then use to create a map of the area. But what I'm most interested in doing right now is finding somebody with no job. All right, that guy has no job. So I'm going to do, what I'm going to do to him is put that table down and see if I can make him become a librarian. He was not interested. He ran away. All right, let's get that. Chop it down. Leather worker. Oh, what does the farmer want now? See, he changed his trade because I haven't purchased from him yet. If you purchase from a villager, it locks their trade, but until you do that, um, their trade is not locked. And if you pick up... Oh, interesting. Now that guy uh, could become an armorer. He's got a blast furnace here, so... They only change uh, their jobs at certain times a day, right about noontime from, oh, I don't know, 8, 10 in the morning to about 2 or 3 p.m. If you were looking at a conventional clock at our, in our world, um, those are the hours that they can change their trades. At other hours, they don't. So what we'll do is, uh, whoops, he's going to sleep in our bed. I'm going to right click on him and get him out of my bed because if we stay up, mobs will begin to spawn and they will start killing our villagers. So I'm going to kick him out of bed, take his bed and sleep in it myself. All right. And there it is. It's morning. 
So now this guy should actually take on a trade. Um, if we leave him alone, he may become an armorer, which would be a good thing to have. Uh, I still would like to find someone to make into a uh, librarian. So let me see. Um, and you can actually cause villagers to villages to increase in size if you breed the villagers. Um, and what they need to breed is a job. And um, no, I'm sorry, I don't think they need a job anymore in 116.3. Um, but they need a bed. So, huh? Well, this is getting tricky. It's daytime and a zombie should be burning up. Now I'm also going to take these hay bales because they spawned with the village. But what you can do with hay bales is break them down into the wheat and uh, use the wheat to make bread, which is what I'm living on right now. But you also, we also may be able to sell it back to the villagers. Let's see if this guy's become anything. What is up with him? Oh, I know what's going on. I think because he, um, because his table is covered with stone, he's not recognizing it as a table. Let's see if we can turn him into a librarian. That would actually be great. He is not, boy, he is not wanting to become a librarian. All right, it isn't quite maybe the time of day that he wants to be. So let's leave him alone for now. Um, I, you, hay bales, actually, you can break faster with, I can't believe how many uh, crafting tables I'm building here to waste, but that's all right. It's not really a waste because um, I would like to have a crafting table anyway. All right, see, um, the hoes are actually the fastest thing to mine hay bales with, and you see it's doing very quick job of this. Um, and we can, if we're really lucky, we can get this farmer to pay us. Wow, that's interesting. There's a large cave under this village. Now, if that bell is rung when there are raids, the villagers will ring that and it will alert all the villagers to run and hide. <clears throat> and if we ring it ourselves, the villagers will all run and hide. But I don't want to do that right now. Uh, hmm, all my villagers seem to have disappeared. This is the time of day they all begin going to their job stations and working. So I think that's what's happened is, yeah, the cartographer's come back to his cartography table. Let's see if we can find that guy that was going to become a smith. He is not. I am going to, I hate to destroy this place, but it, there it is. Yeah, these stones were keeping him from doing his job. So now that I have uh, mined that out, he, you see he's become a, an armorer. And what I'm actually going to do is trade with him, because I can take that coal of mine and trade it with him. And you will see a couple of things. You see how his, tra his experience bar went up, 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 up. So now he... Um, is so advanced when his bar fills all the way up he will let's see if he'll do it now I'm not sure yes see how he gets little particles around him so that means he's gaining experience so now he has more trades available and he can sell us um, and he's very happy with us you see he's given us a good deal he's given me a uh, pair of iron boots for just two emeralds, or a pair of chainmail leggings for just one. Um, but he also is now taking iron as a trade. So see, that's another thing. And the armors are very good to have, actually. Um, they 
can be great. So let's see. We may be able to trade him all the way up again and see what his next level of trade is. And he'll get some more particles. Yeah. And now, oh, now he'll sell his shields and chainmail helmets. And his trade prices went down for some of these other things you see too. So I think I'm going to trade him the rest of my stuff there. So it wasn't quite enough to make it. Oh. Oh, he's not accepting. You see that trade locked, so he won't accept that anymore. But usually, twice or two or more times a day, he will um, reset his trades. And so if we come back to him in a few minutes, he may be willing to buy the rest of our iron. So let's run around and see who else we can find. And uh, if we're lucky, that guy wants potatoes. If we're lucky, we may even be able to find somebody to turn into a um, a librarian. What did I do with my hoe? So I'm going to till this land for him. Um, these guys will... Ooh, look at that. Beetroot seeds. So here are beetroot seeds. Um, and you see, when I dug them up, I can plant them back by right-clicking. But I am actually going to... I don't have beetroot seeds. So, oh no, I lied. I was going to say I was going to take them for myself. But actually, I'll plant them here. Because uh, if we let them grow, there will be somebody here that will pay us for them. I believe. So, I think what I might have to do... He's a leather worker. I wonder if I if I actually steal his cauldron. I think I can make him lose his trade. Yes, he lost his trade. So now I'm going to put down this station and try to turn him. Boy, what did he does he just keep jumping off the walls? I'm gonna put a um that station there and see if uh huh so this guy you see this farmer he will now take wool he will now take hay so we can take all those hay bales that we traded to him and trade him up and farmers are a great villager to have too um, because they will take pumpkins and we can grow pumpkins remember so we are growing pumpkins as a matter of fact so if we get him traded up, um, and farmers are great, eventually they'll take all kinds of great things and they'll pay us for it. And this guy will take carrots. He'll also let us buy bread. So you see we have 31 emeralds. We may be able to... Uh... Oh, there's the guy. So he will take iron again now. And we've actually traded him up to like a fourth level now. Let's see. All right, so see, we can now buy diamond boots and diamond... Uh, leggings from this guy and they're not super duper I mean they they've got enchantments on them fire protection one unbreaking one fire protection one those are actually very good they're um for now at this stage of the game and he'll sell them to me for only 18 so I think I am actually going to buy the boots um and you see how much it makes a big difference too some of these items they Gain a lot of experience for? How much would that be? I don't think I'm going to do that because I'm still holding out hope. You see, I got the enchantment cover me with diamonds because now I have diamond boots. Um, that's quite an achievement, really. Uh, and let's see, we don't have, do we have more coal? No, but see how we've got this guy up to expert level and the only level left is master. Once we get him up to master, we will be able to, um, that'll be as high as they go, but at that level, they give you some really good stuff. So I'm not interested in buying anything from this farmer, but I am interested in selling him things. And I'm interested in finding, oh, heavens, that's a little alarming. Um, yes, I'm very excited to have that armor because you see there, I've got two pieces of diamond armor available now, and, uh, I haven't even had to craft any diamond armor yet myself. Um, now the other thing I think I'm going to do when I leave this village is leave my bed here because that will 
spawn them to... Um, mm, I'd kind of like to have a map, actually, but I'm not going to do it. Um, that will cause him to... Oh, that's my bed. Get out of my bed, buddy. Um... That's the cartographer the armor. Where did I put that? It was over here where the leather smith was, wasn't it? Let's see if we can get him and find him now and if he's become a librarian. I don't know where that guy went. Wherever he is, I'm hoping he's a librarian now instead of a that's the cartographer. Who's this guy? Is that the armor? That's the armor. The librarian usually has a thing on his head that looks like a uh, cap, like cap from a cap and gown, a mortarboard. But uh, I don't know where he's gotten to. Hmm. Very interesting. All right. Somewhere around here, there is a former leather worker that I hope is a librarian now. Ugh, where is he? Well, he should be going to his workstation about um, very soon. All right, so you see what happened when I harvested those red beets, uh, beetroots. I got the beetroot, I got the fully grown beetroot, and I also got two more beetroot seeds. And this time I think I am going to steal one of those seeds because I can start growing beetroots back at my house if I have a seed. Um, maybe I'll put this here. Let him grow wheat instead. And that's the guy that wants carrots. But you see, I haven't traded with him yet either. So I could potentially... Um, I could pick up his workstation, which is this composter. And that would break his... Uh, it would reset his trades. He might have different trades. But you can only do that until you trade with him. If you actually buy or sell something to them, it locks their trades. And from that point, those are their trades. Um, they can gain new trades with new levels, but they can't change their initial trade after that. Well, I don't know. This is crazy. I almost feel like I have killed this leather worker by breaking his workstation. I cannot imagine where he's gone to. Oh man, what is it with me? I run into that cactus every time I come in here. Uh -huh. Here's a place I haven't been. The other thing that's interesting about this village, uh, if you're not used to villages, you probably didn't notice it, but what I'm noticing is there are no chests. Usually villages have some chests in them um, and there will be different items inside them that you can take uh, if you choose. Um, I do. Well, there's what is this the cartographer. Uh, I usually take them for the longest time when I started playing Minecraft. I, I felt wrong to rob them and so I didn't do it, but nowadays I well, this is incredible. I do not know where that leather worker went. That is so weird. Oh, 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 oh. You know what I bet? I bet he became... He, that's what happened. He became that other farmer. So this guy, yeah, that was him. Okay, now I'm... Now I'm, I see what happened. So he... Um, I wonder if he'll follow me in here. Yes, he did. Oh, and he became... Oh, look at that. So that right there is what I want. A mending librarian is one of the best things you can get. And I, like a fool, did not bring my book. I was going to bring the book and I forgot to bring it. Oh my goodness, this is embarrassing. All right. And we have the emeralds. 
If we can get a book, we have the necessary emeralds to buy a mending book, which will be uh, mending, if you're not familiar with it, is an enchantment that allows experience that you get from killing mobs or from mining, mining a lot of things, mining coal. Um, when you smelt ores like gold, you get... Goodness, I know I saw sugar cane. Where did I see it? Um, when you smelt different ores, you get experience well mending allows that experience and when you mine coal um mending enchantment allows that experience to repair whatever you have the enchantment on your tools your armor and i hope to goodness that guy still has his mending trade that was a pretty good deal mending for 14 emeralds is not at all a bad deal let's see that's the cartographer let's see if we can find our guy Hello, Mr. Iron Golem. Librarian. There he is over there. Oh, man, I hope he's still taking men. I hope he's still selling mending. Well, he is running away from us, isn't he? All right, please. Yes! So... Now that I have locked that trade, this guy will always take, um, he will always sell us mending, and his prices may go up or down based on how much he likes us. Um, for example, if you cure a zombie villager, then that villager and the others that witnessed it will give you better trades. But I think that's where I'm going to end for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, oh my goodness, I could not be happier than to get a mending trader. Oh, I'm sorry. I do want to try one thing. Let me go see if I can find that farmer. Um, I was going to sell him some pumpkins. Hey, excuse me. There he is. And there you go. All right. And we still have 14 emeralds, which means, actually, let's do this. I think I'm going to buy one of this guy's maps because, um, I'll show you how maps work. If you have a map in your hand, put it in your hotbar, in your hand, and then you right-click, it will it will uh, sh make a map of the area around you. And you see what that... Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So you see the little... Uh, when I turn, that little icon that's turning, that's me. And it shows you which way I'm facing on this map. So now I have a map of um, this village, but it's only of this front little part of the village. So let's see, do I have sugar cane? I do. So I can show you what, uh, let's see, where was the cartographer? He was over here. If we go to his cartography station, you will see that I can um, make rats. I need to make paper. If I have paper, I have sugar cane, I just need to make it into some paper. And when we do that, it will allow us to... Um... Now if we had enough of that, we could trade it to him for some emeralds. But what I'm going to do is take this map that I have, which is very small, and I'm going to expand it. So if you put that on, put this torch in the cartography table, and you put another piece of paper in there, you expand that map to the next size. So if we go outside, you'll see that now this map is of a much bigger area. Um, but it's of that much bigger area. It's going to map more towards our house and actually not more of this village. But we can expand it again. So let's go expand it. And I believe you can do that four times. Or three times, I guess, for the fourth size of map. So what I'm going to do now is put that on there and put another piece of paper in there. It gets bigger yet. Um, and let's see. Yes, so now you see if I... Uh, if you start running around, there's... A, watch this cat. He'll run away when we get close. Oh, there's a bunny rabbit. Something killed it, so I'm going to get that meat. That's always good meat to eat. Um, Oh, maybe the cat, actually. The cat killed it, probably. So, 
but you see if we run around here we can this map will fill out as we get within range of it <clears throat> so as we walk around and when we go start sailing home we'll see that this map fills out even more um, but ironically it's determined not to show us very much of this village actually the village does appear on here it's just hard to see. It's these little sandstone sh colored buildings against the sand and so and that red dot that you see off there is probably a pool of lava. That's the way lava appears when it's on a map. I suspect if we go over where that is we'll find some surface lava. Now maps only show you the surface so if something's underground you won't be able to see it on your map. But uh, yes, okay, so there is some lava, and you could see where it appeared on my map as a little red dot. Okay. But I think now that is where I'm going to call it for this evening, for this episode, and uh, if my boat is there, I can't remember if I left my boat. If my boat is there, I'll sail back home, and you may see some of my... Um, you should see some more of this map fill out when I do that too. And two things I want to do while I'm here. I'm going to place another bed um, because that will allow more villagers to spawn. Um, and I'm going to put a smoker out here near this bed in hopes that it will create um, a butcher. So next time we come back we may find that there's a butcher here and there's a com. I'm going to put this composter down back over here and that may as we get uh, more villagers spawning we may find that they take on those trades if we're lucky. So that's alright. So I'm going to break that boat with my axe and we'll run home, but you see when we're running home, um, that map, I like the look of our house from a, uh, this map will start filling out. And as we go this way, we'll fill out some more of the map in that direction. All right, well, thanks for watching, everybody. I think that'll do it for this episode. And uh, I'll see you next time.